welcome back to Lex Reads. So in today's video, I actually wanted to dedicate a video um, talking about books by non-Black authors that I either like or want to read. And you guys know, I mean, I read everything Black, okay? But there are some that are not by us that I have enjoyed. And then, of course, there are some that I have just been very intrigued. So again, I want to share some with you. So we are going to break them up in categories. So the first category are the ones that I have read, okay? And again, there's not a lot. Now, these are books I actually enjoyed, okay? Because I have read more books by white authors. Again, these are the ones that I actually really did enjoy. Phantom of the Opera by Gaston LaRue. And I grew up on Phantom of the Opera. Uh, sorry guys about the wind. I have very cheap windows. Very cheap, okay? And when the wind is out, it does that howling, girl. Okay, let's get back to Phantom of the Opera. So, like I said, I grew up on Phantom of the Opera, especially the musical. I actually saw the musical, ooh, back in college. It was some years ago and absolutely loved it. That music is like no other. And because I had grew up on, you know, the musical, I was like, let me read it. And girl phantom he got everybody together okay and you don't mess with him do not mess with him because <laughs> again he will get you together and he got he got a good amount of people together but they was bothering him okay he had a reason they was bothering him uh but i mean this is a classic it honestly is and it was so fun to read now there were some passages that were kind of like a little scary and the crazy thing is you know when you're reading a book you can't turn your head um, uh, but I find that I was like, oh Lord, Jesus, Phantom was kind of weird. Phantom was a little dark. Um, but yeah, this again, it's a classic, classic. Next is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. Now, you know what? I remember reading this during the pandemic, actually in May, because clearly we had nothing to do. We couldn't go nowhere. Um, uh, but I remember reading this and just was flabbergasted, y'all. She is an author where... When she comes up with something, I am going to get it. It does not take a lot to impress me. <laughs> it honestly doesn't. And she impressed me because this talked about <sighs> pedophilia in a different way. And that it had never been discussed before. That I had never, you know, had been aware of. And you have the main protagonist, um, Vanessa. Vanessa is... Oh, Lord. She is a 16, 16, 17. She's a teenager and she goes to a, I think it was a private school. And she starts to have a relationship with her teacher who was in his 40s. And she is questioning throughout the book, was that rape? Or did I want to be with him? Didn't I want to be with him? Like, you know, what was it? And it comes up because years, she literally had a relationship with this man into her 30s. And it comes up because another girl that was a previous student of his kind of made, well, kind of, did make some advances, okay? And she contacts her and Vanessa like, I wasn't a victim. Like, it was, I played a part in that relationship because some stuff happened in this book and it was very shocking um this is a book you know what i need to revisit this okay and really read it and I, you know what i probably do um i probably would i know i probably have to get another copy because i did tab it um and i really need to redo these because these are these tabs don't even match and this was when i wasn't a serious reader because y'all know this is purple i would have to have purple tabs but i digress um but yeah i'm gonna have to go back and reread some passages because lord uh, another thing that she does where it can be kind of uncomfortable reading it is she has some scenes obviously some sex scenes um uh, with a teenager and a 40 something year old man so it's some trigger warnings if you you know if if you're not ready for that don't read this okay because it was some stuff like lord jesus oh okay but yeah this book does that to you but i thoroughly enjoyed this and like i said this is a book i need to revisit again because i got to get back into her mind Next, oh Lord, this is another trauma-filled book. And this is a book that I will never forget. This is a book that when people read it, they, they cannot forget. And it is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagahara. This book will always have a special place in my heart because this probably was the first book. It's not probably. It is the first book that I read that was over 
800 pages okay that's when i stopped being intimidated by big books after i read this after i read this because i said well you can read this you can read anything this i have never met a character like jude saint francis that has been through so much this boy oh lord uh, it she made hana hanya did this book so well where when I was reading this book, while reading this book, and after I reading this book, I kept on thinking about Jude, like Jude was, you know, out in the world. And I'm like, girl, he not real. That's how she did this book with these characters. And this book, it's another trigger-filled book. If you cannot deal with, who, this deals with pedophilia. It deals with rape. It deals with physical, mental, verbal abuse. It deals with self-harm. It deals with homosexuality. It deals with, oh Lord, is that it? As you can see, that list is not for the week. And this is also a book where you will not forget what happened. So that means you don't need to reread the book. I don't see how people reread this book because I have never, this is, trauma is an understatement for this book. It's like, I, I don't even go back. Sometimes I will go back and read passages of certain books. I can't even read passages in this book because it just, oh Lord. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Okay. Next is Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. Now, I did a video, what, about books that I read in high school and college. It was a book that I read in high school that I actually liked because... Them books in high school was just, girl, a mess. Uh, this book is beyond complex. Beyond complex. And this is another book where there's no happy ending. They, it cannot be happy, okay? And if you have read this, Lenny, oh, Lord. Lenny had my heart. I was so, oh, I was so broken. The next book is, of course, Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This is a classic. This is a classic. I had, ooh, recently read this last year and just, this is like a good meal okay i love everything about this book and this is another book that it is what 178 pages and it is very complex because what happens to jay gatsby lord that he wrote this story this this is another book where you never forget you can't forget those characters i will never forget daisy and tom and who else uh obviously jay oh my goodness so yeah and then this is jazz era and that's in 1920s y'all know how much i love 1920s because that's in the harlem renaissance this just was fantastic i mean if you haven't read the great gatsby you need to read the great gatsby okay like read it now and then lastly i would say is night by eli weasel i also talked about this in my um books i read in high school and college this is a book i will never forget too because it's talking about the holocaust it's a true story and the way that he wrote being in the concentration camps and you know losing his whole family and oh my goodness some of these books are trauma filled books and for some reason i i don't know why but i like books like that i think maybe because they are realistic and i do like books that have you know a little happier you know ending but at the same time it's like i want i want to read something that's also realistic okay because life it throws you curveballs it honestly does and i mean with the holocaust that's beyond brutality that's beyond trauma that's just yeah okay um so when i read this this was the first book i cried to when i was about 16 years old because he just put you in the mindset of the holocaust it's yeah all right so now let's get into the books that i want to read by white authors all right so first two are actually Jer uh our joyce carol oates and you guys know i did um in my tbr video uh for 2023 i talked about her book we are the mulvaney's and that's actually on my cart to read and i'm a type of person where i follow my tbr i have to because i like structure my mind works like this <laughs> but i remember i wanted to read obviously we were the mulvaney's because i saw the it was a tv movie that lifetime did years ago and i was looking through some interviews of hers and she had mentioned um this book actually black water and this is inspired by um who what was the lady's name i don't know why i want to say her name was mary Kay, but she was in the car with uh man the kennedy man is it edward 
oh my goodness well, i'll put a picture up i think it's at work but she was in the car with one of the kennedy boys um and he was married she got in that car and they hit i think a wall or a bridge or something and they went into the water he managed to get out he climbed out of that car she did it so which means he saved himself and he didn't save her okay but that story it kind of they glazed over that a little bit and i think that he didn't even get prosecuted it looked like he paid a couple of fines and that was it and also a couple years ago they did a, a movie on that like you know event or whatever and it was one of the movies where it was like in special theaters and again they gloss over that because they don't want that to be just pronounced because first of all why were you in a car with a young lady that's not your wife y'all had just came from a party what was y'all doing what caused you to drive into the water and then you go get out and live and she not there's too many there's a there there okay she was inspired from that story and she wrote this so that's why i wanted to get into that and then this book just sounds so intriguing because it's about a mother first of all it's called rape a love story and i believe this book is about a mother and a daughter that gets raped and the town doesn't believe them i gotta get my mind right to read this book but um i am gonna start with obviously we were the mavanis because that is on my list um and then i want to get into these all right next oh lord this is gonna be i can do it though anna karenita <laughs> now this book how many pages is this okay it's about 800 pages just like a little life so like i said i'm not intimidated I said I'm not intimidated. Um, now, I remember, I actually, I got this edition because of the um, the font is not that little. Because uh, I can't read a big book like this and the font is little. That's just torture. That don't, even, that don't even make sense to me. So, I did get this version because, like I said, the font is bigger. I do know the backstory. I know what's going to happen to Anna because I have seen, you know, the movies. I personally like the newest one with um, Kira Knightley um but yeah next is a human strain by philip ross now this is another book that i had saw the movie and was fascinated because this and he's a college professor and they believe there's some racist there's some racial aspects that goes on between him and a student and i think he is accused of that but there's a secret that he is holding. And when I became aware of the secret when I watched that movie, I said, oh, you got to be kidding me. I said, oh, you have to be kidding me. Straight up. So well, that movie did that to me. And I said, oh, I have to get the book. I have to get the book. I, oh, Lord. Yes. Dude, like, seriously? Like, that's what you did? Next is Lolita by Vladimir Nobokov. Now, I wanted to read this because this book my dark vanessa is really inspired by this because the um teacher that she's having a relationship with uh who was that teacher's name jacob strain or whatever he um <laughs> always referenced this book and it makes sense because you have a man that's having a relationship or fantasizing about a teenage girl and he a grown man and that is literally the premise of this story she kept on mentioning that book and i was like oh i have to read this book i have to read it and i still have yet to read this y'all yet to read it now i'm gonna say something y'all they be talking about banned books how they ain't banned all the black books this is pedophilia right here but this is a great classic they be doing this all right let's move on next is sally rooney beautiful world where are you now i don't know what okay you guys know the series that she came out with um that was on hulu Hulu girl normal people tried to watch it the first time didn't finish it tried to watch it the second time didn't finish it tried to watch it the third time didn't finish it i said okay i'm giving up then she had another, her second book, Conversation with Friends, that also turned into a series on Hulu. Got to about the third episode and I just got disinterested. I say all that to say, I can't even get through the TV series. So 
<laughs> I don't know why I want to read this. Uh, why do I want to read this? Get together, they break up, they have sex, they worry about sex, they worry about their friendship. Okay, so you basically just have a bunch of young people hooking up with each other and finding themselves. I don't. Okay, yeah. All right, so um, lastly is Pachinko by Ming Zhang Li. I wanted to read this after I saw an interview of hers and she was describing the book and it's like a family saga. We really like family sagas. Know that on Apple TV, there is a series of this. I think the only thing is um, it's uh, it's not in English, it's, it's subtitles and Lord. I hate watching movies with subtitles because it's like, I don't want to read. I want to watch. But I do, you know what I think I might do? I'm not a person, I'm a type of person where I don't have to read the book first and then watch, you know, the movie or a TV series. I could see if I like it. I could, you know, watch a TV series and be like, okay, I want to read the book. I've done that with a lot of books. So I think, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to watch, try to watch you know, uh, and see if I like the series that came on Apple TV. And if I do, I'm going to give it a stab. I really am. Um, but I think regardless, I am going to give it a stab. I just have to, you know, I'm a mood reader, so I got to be in the mood for this. What I need to probably do is, because I saw the interview years ago, I need to go back and watch an interview or watch some interviews of the author. And that'll kind of get me, my juices flowing and say, okay, I want to read it. So yeah, guys, that's it when it comes to my books by non-black authors. Like I said, I don't have a lot. I have, it's a decent amount, okay? It's a decent amount. Um, I'm going to try and read some more, but y'all know I like to read us. I mean, there's no one like us, so yeah. So yeah, guys, that's all I have for you. I'll be back with more black books. Bye.